Hello everyone, in today's tutorial I'm going to talk about the MCP2515 CAN module, which is this one here, these two modules here. But before going into details about this device, let me first briefly talk about the CAN bus protocol. CAN is the short form for Control Area Network, which is a message-based protocol designed to allow electronic control units found in vehicles and other electronic devices to communicate with each other in a reliable, priority-driven fashion. Although this CAN protocol has originally developed to be used in vehicles, today it is used in a number of applications. For example, in airplanes, ships, elevators, and even in a number of industries. So this CAN bus system is made up of various electronic control units, which are usually called nodes, and each node consists of a CPU, a CAN controller, and a transceiver. These nodes communicate via a CAN bus, which consists of two wires that are twisted, and those wires usually have 120 ohm termination resistors on their ends. So in simple terms, the CAN bus system is like uh, another system, where those nodes or electronic control units are the parts of the body which are interconnected via the CAN bus. Since this is a beginner tutorial, I won't go too much into the technical aspects of the CAN bus system and the technicalities of how, how communication works on the CAN bus, but I'm going to put a, a link in the description of my video below where you can visit my written tutorial where I've gone into details on the more technical aspects of the CAN bus system, including the various versions of the CAN protocol and the structure of the CAN message frame. For now, let's continue with the looking at the MCP2515 CAN module and how it can be used with Arduino. So this is a close look at the MCP2515 CAN module and this is the major the MCP2515 IC which is the major control for this module and this side is the TJ1050 CAN transceiver and it's the one which is responsible for the communication between this MCPI and the CAN bus or the outlet on these two pins here. So this side we have the 8 MHz crystal oscillator then here we have the SPI communication block this is the interrupt pin, this side is the clock pin, this is the SI or the master out slave in pin, this is the SO pin which is the master in slave out pin, this is the CS or the chip select pin, then you have the ground and the VCC. I'll be showing you how we connect these to a microcontroller like Arduino shortly. Then here we have this jumper, this is the 120 ohm termination jumper, usually connected to the first and last nodes of our CAN network. And here we have these two terminals here. This side is the CAN high and this is the CAN low. So from here we can be able to connect our CAN bus and connect this module to other modules using the two wire CAN bus. Now let's have a look at how this MCP2515 CAN module can be used with Arduino to create a simple CAN network. We are going to use this simple setup to demonstrate the working of a simple CAN network. We are going to have two we are going to have two nodes here, which are going to be represented by these two MCP2515 CAN modules. So this side, this mode is going to act as our transmitter, and this is going to be our receiver. Then this side, we're going to connect a BHT11 temperature and humidity sensor, and also a potentiometer. And the other side, we're going to connect an I2C LCD display. So this LCD display will be showing us the results of the measurements taken by this sensor and the potentiometer. So connecting the MCP2515 CAD module, Arduino is very simple because this one is using SPI communication. So we shall be connecting these SPI pins for the module with the SPI digital pins of the Arduino. So depending on the Arduino board that you are using, you can check the SPI communication pins. But for my case, I'm using Arduino Uno. And Arduino Uno uses pins 10, 11, 12, and 13 for SPI communication. You are going to connect your first pin here, which is the interrupt. It's going to go to Arduino digital pin 2. Then the clock pin is going to go to Arduino digital pin 13. Then the SI pin, which is the master out, slave in pin for SPI communication. It's going to go to pin 11. Then the SO pin, which is the master in, slave out, SPI communication is going to go to pin 12. Then you have the CS or the chip select pin. That one will go to Arduino dictator pin 10. And these last two pins here, the ground will go to ground and then the VCC will go to 5 volts of Arduino. So the connection here is the same as the one for this other side, but this one will go to this other Arduino board. Then we are going to connect the DHT11 temperature and humidity sensor. I'm going to use an analog pin A1 and then I'll connect the potentiometer to analog pin A0. Then this side, this is the I2C LCD. I2C communication for Arduino Uno is on analog pin 5 for the clock and analog pin 4 for the data pin. So I'll be connecting these ones for the LCD display and also the power and ground pins will be shared with Arduino. 
So this is the simple setup. I will put a schematic for reference. Then I also talk about something small about these 120 ohm termination jumpers if you are constructing a CAN network. So normally these jumpers are usually put on the first and last nodes on your network. And here because we are using only two modules, it means this one, these modules are, one is the beginning and the other one is at the end of the network. So in such a case, it means both of these modules will have the termination jumpers. But if you are going to use more than two nodes, or if you are going to have more than two of these, no, of these modules, it means the, the modules or the nodes which are going to be in between the network, you don't need to put the termination jumpers. Hope you keep that in mind. Let's have a quick look at the kind of code that we are going to be using to run this CAN network. This is the code we are going to be using to run our MCP2515 CAN module. So the code is going to be divided into parts. This side we have the transmitter code. On the other side we have the receiver code. So on the side of the transmitter, we are first going to be including the SPI library, the MCP2515 and the DHT libraries. Uh, these libraries will be controlling the SPI communication, then the CAN communication and the DHT temperature and humidity sensor. Then next we define connections for the DHT sensor and the potentiometer. You only have the initial value of the potentiometer reading as zero. Then we we'll create and initiate the DHT object from the DHT class. This object contains the DHT pin connected to the Arduino and the DHT type as DHT 11. Then here we create a, a structure of storing the CAN messages received from the potentiometer and DHT sensor. So I'm going to be using a CAN message and then CAN message one for storing the potentiometer and DHT 11 readings. Next. The MCP2515 object is initiated from the class MCP2512515 by passing the chip select pin as an argument. In the setup section, we begin the SPI communication using the SPI begin and also begin reading values of the DHT11 sensor. And then we recall the functions of the object MCP2515 reset the MCP2515 using the reset, reset the speed and clock using the set bitrate. Also set the MCP2515 to work in a normal mode using the set normal mode function. So can ID is the user generated X code. For example, I have used zero times AA for the potentiometer message and I used zero times BD for the DHT11 message. Then the current DLC is the length of data with the maximum of 8 bytes allowed. So for demonstration purpose, I have used the data length of 1 byte for the potentiometer and 8 bytes for the DHT sensor. In the loop section, we get the readings of the DHT sensor, the humidity and temperature reading, and then we get also the readings from the potentiometer, and then convert those readings using the map function. Convert them to a scale of 0 to 255. So the values the values that you're going to be showing on your LCD will be from 0 to 255. Then we can also use the printing function so that you can be able to see those values in a serial monitor of Arduino. Then next we assign the members of the data from the structure that we created earlier. So we are going to input the data for the potential meter value and then also input data for the DHT11 sensor. The DHT11 sensor used 8 bytes, but here we are only going to be using 2 bytes, one for the temperature reading and the other one for the meter reading, and the other bytes would be left as 0. Then we use the send message function to send the data across the CAN bus, that is the transmitter code. On the receiver side, the structure is almost the same. Here we put the SPI library, then the MCP2515 library, then the wire library and the liquid crystal I2C library are for the working of the I2C LCD display. Then here we are initializing our I2C LCD, then we create the structures for the data of the potentiometer and DHT11 sensor. We initialize the CAN module and in the setup function, we are simply going to use the LCD begin function to light up your LCD and the backlight. Initially, the LCD is going to display the message. My tech Twitter, Arduino can. The rest of the code is almost the same as the other one. This is for beginning the SPI communication. And this one is for resetting, setting the speed and clock. Then also putting the MCP2515 in the normal mode. The loop section is where we are going to, read, to use the read message function to be able to get the message on the CAN bus. Then here I shall be using, so the read message function is to verify the incoming messages and then compare 
the IDs with the ID from the transmitter code. Then we extract the message and then display it on the potentiometer. This first part will be for displaying the message from the potentiometer on the I2C LED. And then this other part is for displaying the readings of the DHT 11 temperature and humidity sensor. This is how the code is going to be working. I've now finished uploading the code to the transmitter and receiver boards of Arduino. Let me turn on and then we see what happens or what we are observing here. So as you can see here, I have turned on my Arduino boards and if you observe here on the LCD, you can see the reading of the potentiometer and then the temperature and humidity sensor. And as you can see, whenever I turn the potentiometer, these readings here keep on changing depending on the reading on the potentiometer. So meaning that the signals from this MCP2515 CAN module are being transmitted to this other one and they're being received by this Arduino board and then displayed here. So this is the simple demonstration of how the CAN network works. You can try out using maybe even more than two modules and you see what you gain. But I hope you have learned something new today. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and watch my other tutorials. Thanks for watching.